Washington's own cabinet was divided, with Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton in the Federalist camp and Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson in the other. You could see this struggle between what will dominate in American political economy, that is, what kinds of laws and policies will government set. But I think that the critical development took place only after 1793, after issues of foreign policy came to the fore in American politics. In February of 1793, only a month before Washington's second inauguration, France declared war on Britain. And the United States found itself caught between the two. Washington made a daring decision. The last thing in the world the United States needed in the 1790s was to become caught up in Europe's murderous quarrels. We would not have survived, militarily or otherwise. And Washington did something extraordinarily bold. Washington issued a neutrality proclamation. There was some question whether this was even constitutional. Presidents don't get to declare war, Congress declares war. And neutrality is sort of saying we're not going to go to war, so where does the president get off declaring neutrality? Washington was vilified in the press. He was called a betrayer of the revolution, a dupe of King George. He was burned in effigy in Philadelphia. Washington took some criticism for this, but it became one of the longest lasting precedents in American political history. The idea that the United States ought to remain aloof from the wars of Europe. What Washington does is to set early on the precedent that the American president makes foreign policy. 